And if all else fails, 17 will probably be a support move or vice versa. 17 may be the one that's in this game and 18 be a support. Either way it goes, I think both androids could be in the game in theory, but knowing Arc system, they want to save as many character slots as possible. So 17 and 18 may end up just being one character that just shares the same costume. Hello everybody, Tyrone the Guy 3 here, and it's been a while since I made part 1 of the Dragon Ball Fighters rosters video. You should go check it out if you haven't already before checking this video out. Some of the things that we've gotten as far as information wise have been proven right, some of them have been proven wrong, and some of them have taken me by quite surprise. One of which being the introduction of a new character, completely new to the Dragon Ball franchise, and her name is Android 21. This is what she looks like. Ain't she cute? Anyway, moving on, since we don't know much about Android 21, all we have at this point is just a design and then speculation about who she could be. Android 16's mother, sister, one of the two, it doesn't, it's still up in the air. Um, a lot of other things that I stated were proven right, and some of them actually took me by surprise. For one, I like to say that I did call that Android 16 17 and 18 were all going to be in the game with Android 18 and 17 basically being together with 18 taking the main role because we need a female character to represent the female demographic that's why Android 21 is now there as well but also due to the fact that Android 17 is a support character which if you recall in my last video I did say that that was going to be a probability of things that could happen. I also did state that it could be vice versa and 17 is the main character since he was introduced with all this flashiness in Dragon Ball Super with 18 being the support but I knew either way it would go 18 and 17 would both be in the game pretty much glued together because it would make no sense at all to have them both be separate characters when they're pretty much the same character. However, outside of that, we got proven that obviously Piccolo and Krillin were put in the game like we said before. And also, Yamcha and Tien are confirmed to be in the game. And that's one of the informations that took me by the most surprise, even more so than Android 21. Just simply because Yamcha has never made it into any 2D head-to-head -head fighter. Not counting the Budokai games, because those are 3D head-to-head -head fighters. But Yamcha's never been in a 2D head-to-head -head fighter game. And Tien's only been in one. That one being Dragon Ball Ultimate Battle. Battle 22. So with that said, there's a couple of characters that I don't have to name on this list anymore because they're already confirmed to be in the game. Like for example, Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta are both confirmed to be pre-order DLC when you get Dragon Ball Fighters. But other than that, I guess we can go on a few other characters that I made on this list a way while back before they even started revealing characters for the roster. Because it looks like a lot of what I predicted on this roster is coming to fruition. And some additionals, that being Android 21, which I'm very excited to see and I hope she is utilized very well. It is not just a cheap female cash grab character that's thrown into the game at last minute. So, moving on with this list, we've got Master Roshi I put on here, but I did put in parentheses that Master Roshi would be buff. The reason being is that we don't need an old man character who's just there to be there, plus size ratio wise it would make a lot more sense for Master Roshi to be buff, thus his hitbox is wider and he's slower, but he'll be more of a tank and be able to tank off a lot of moves and be able to do several powerful attacks because of this huge buff. One of the things that I also believe that Master Roshi can have going for him is the fact that he can be a very tactical fighter. Moves like the Mafuba and the Kamehameha and the Paralyzing Lightning Surprise Attack can be utilized very well for him and thus have supported characters do a lot of damage as well since you are able to cause above on your support in the background to do various attacks. And thus this can make for a very useful double-edged character who has low speed and low mobility but very high defense and attack power. Next up here we've got a couple of Dragon Ball Super characters I feel like should be on the list as well considering the fact that one we did end up getting a trailer of Dragon Ball Fighters after I made this video a while back and we see that Boma is in her Dragon Ball Super like outfit that being the cut hair and the red scarf plus Golden Frieza is in there as well so it's not too far fetched to say that Dragon Ball Super characters could make an appearance if you look into it. 
one of those characters being Hit. Hit is a very famous character, plus Hit's use of the time skip techniques can make him a very good counter character. If you play the Blaze Blue games, if you're familiar with Arc System games, then Blaze Blue has a character similar to that who is known to be a very powerful character who relies mostly on counters. So it wouldn't be off to say that they could utilize from a 2D fighter who is very well useful in counter attacks. Thus, my opponents, it'll be a trick game of having opponents end up using mix-ups and combos only to be fooled into attacking hit while he's in certain positions thus triggering those counters and I think it would be an additional fun thing to see that on your side you can see the actual counter attacks that hit uses while on the opponent's side if they're fighting against you online all they see is their character getting hit like the screen freezes for a second and then their character ends up flying back taking damage because they ended up attacking at wrong times I think that would be very well done without abusing the frames that are in Dragon Ball Fighters, and it would look very great spectacle-wise on your end just because you're able to utilize that. They did it once before with Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 where Hit does a time skip attack and you get hit and fly back, but the opponent who actually uses the attack on you gets to actually see the move that was used on you. Obviously, another character I believe would be good for the game would be Kaba at Super Saiyan 1. The reason of being is because Kaba is actually around the same height as Super Saiyan 2 Go Team Gohan. So I think his character would match very well with what's going on in terms of fighting wise. We have another mid, mid to short level character to balance things out so you'll have to use a lot lower and mid based attacks rather than high attacks and you'll have to find a way to mix up your combos a bit while he himself probably has less health but better speed. That's usually how mid to short level characters work out. Moving on, I believe there should be a such thing as a Battle of Gods DLC, much like in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1, where we end up with characters like Beerus and then having him have a costume change into Shampa, making us either A, a similar costume to that of Shampa, or B, just plain making Beerus and then have a costume change and now he's Shampa, just so long as it doesn't make any too drastic moves to Beerus or Shampa, considering that they're both about the same size anyway. The only problem I would see with that would be frame rates, but even that I don't think should be a too huge of an issue, considering, like I said, Beerus and Champa pretty much are twin brothers and thus know the same attacks. Whis and obviously a Vados costume change, either A, make Whis have the same color palette as Vados, or B, have a female version of Whis when you switch him out with the character, with the costume swap, and he looks like Vados, that would be an obvious choice to do. That way, you know, Whis and Vados, I'm sure, just like with Beerus and Champa, they have the exact same moves. So that wouldn't be too out there to, to say. Plus, I believe Whis would be a lot like the character Rachel, Rachel Alucard from uh, Blaze Blue. A very mixed up tactical character, you know, she could leave, but he, he, I'm sorry if we're still counting Vados. He, if he's Whis, can leave like these little, like, cool little orbs behind and if you hit them, or he can activate those orbs anytime he wants by pressing one of the buttons. And thus it causes an explosion or knockback, which will knock you straight into Whis and thus Whis can continue his combos and mix up. So it'd be a game of, oh snaps, he Whis left a bunch of little traps here. If you're trying to see where the Blaze Blue connection is, Rachel Alucard actually has a move like this where she leaves several different like rods on the ground while the fight goes around you can plant all these rods and these rods if you press the drive button has the ability to all ignite and they all burst into lightning and they end up shocking the opponent thus immobilizing them for short amounts of time and that can give Rachel like a short chance in order to continue her combos and mix-ups and I believe Whis and Bottles can pretty much control the exact same way because of this. Moving on, we have Super Saiyan God Goku, but not Super Saiyan Blue Goku, the Super Saiyan God Goku that was in Battle of Gods and recently in Dragon Ball Super, the one with the red hair. I believe he would his stats would pretty much differ from Super Saiyan Blue Goku, but only by a little bit. Either that or his combos can be a bit different. And from what I see here, each of the characters in Dragon Ball Super pretty much have their own style. So like Vegeta, I think is standard. Goku is all around. So you can have a 
Super Saiyan Blue Goku continue the all around thing that Super Saiyan Goku has, and then have Super Saiyan God Goku, the one with the red hair, be like a standard or a mixer or a long ranger or something like that. Just have him be a bit more, you know, tactical or different than that one. That way he uses up less energy but does less damage or something like that. I, f I feel like it would be a bit of an injustice to not have that character in the game, at least as DLC. Like I said, these characters fall into the Battle of Gods DLC pack that I'm envisioning, so I feel like there's no reason why they can't add him. At least as DLC, because then that means he can at least come later on when the roster's pretty much been filled up and then they just need to fill up more slots. So moving on, we've got the Revenge, the Resurrection F Saga, or Revenge of Frieza Saga, whatever have you, DLC pack. Well, I originally had uh, Super Saiyan Blue, Goku, and Vegeta for this pack, but since it's already confirmed that they'll be in pre-order, there's no point in doing that. And like I said, Captain Ginyu can actually be in the game at this point, but instead of having Captain Ginyu in one costume, you can change up his costume to have him have the Tagama outfit. That way... And that DLC pack, you come, it comes with Tagama, and thus you can have a Tagama costume change. And you can have, if adult Gohan is in the game, you can have him with his green jumpsuit. And I think that'd be pretty cool. Or Tien switch up his costume so that he can have the same costume that he wore in Resurrection F. You know, various things like that I think would be really good. That way, if Master Roshi's in the game, he can wear his outfit from there as well. And, you know, just keep characters like that. And, you know, at this point, Resurrection F is just a lot of costume changes, so if it is a DLC pack, it'll more than likely cost less than the Battle of Gods pack, because it's mostly just costume changes. Next up, and finally, I believe we have the Dragon Ball Super and GT DLC pack. Why did I put these two together? Well, these are pretty much just leftover characters that I had in mind on the list, and I feel like these DLCs would be better coming together rather than just being separate DLCs, because individually they would be way too small to be considered DLC. Together, I think that would be a nice combination, not only costume changes, but added characters. Obviously, we got Super Saiyan 4's Goku and Vegeta. They can control similar to that of Super Saiyan Blue, Goku, and Vegeta. With different moves, obviously. Goku's being the ten times coming at Maya, And Vegeta's being the final shine attack. Just to show up a little bit of mix-up and difference. And they'll just have the characters control similarly. And then to their already Super Saiyan Blue and regular Vegeta counterparts. Although the odds of the Super Saiyan 4 being in this game are less likely. Considering the fact that they already have Goku and Vegeta. So, and they have Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Vegeta, and plus if they do add that uh, Super Saiyan Red Goku in there, it, it lowers the odds of Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta even more. But it wouldn't hurt to at least have those characters in there, you know, at least to, to have the characters in there. Speaking of costume changes, it wouldn't be too far-fetched to have Trunks have the Dragon Ball GT costume that he wore, because it's pretty much the exact same, just, you know, Trunks now has that blue shirt the scarf and then the brown shorts so it wouldn't make any like huge differences and he can pretty much control the exact same way he controls and his future trunk stage moving on we've got nova and obviously with nova we would have ice shinron as a costume change you could pretty much make the fire blue instead of red for Ice Shinron, thus the similarities would still be there, or just have it blue and then have the fire be the same color. It's pretty much just a costume change, you know, just as a nod off to, to hey, Ice Shinron does exist, but we just didn't want to program two characters that control exactly the same. Nova, I can see Nova being a nice speedy character, utilizing speed. Uh, being very damaging or have like a burn ability so when he does damage opponents they slowly end up losing health because of the burn but only for a couple of seconds but his uh, initial attacks themselves don't do a lot of damage so the whole gimmick is oh can you slowly whittle down your opponent's health while you're beating up your opponent with mix-up combos I think that'd be pretty cool um Vegeta or baby Vegeta uh, I believe that either a there's gonna be a costume change with the original Vegeta to make him look like baby Vegeta to, that way to save them the trouble of adding another character literally named Vegeta. Or B, if they, if they go for it, then they can have baby Vegeta. Just have him use various different attacks in order to, you know, match up with the baby Vegeta that's in Dragon Ball GT. Next up, we got Sin Shinron, and by extension, Omega Shinron. 
This one isn't really a costume change, more so less than since Shinron is basically going to be the main fighter, and much like Frieza transforming into Golden Frieza, since Shinron has the ability to absorb all seven Dragon Balls and then transform into a Mega Shinron, and thus his attack power goes up, speed goes up, uh, ultimate moves do a lot more damage and things like that. So it'll be a lot like Golden Frieza's transformation only you know, Shin, Sin Shinron to Omega. I don't believe anybody should have a huge problem with controlling mostly Sin Shinron since Sin Shinron and Omega Shinron essentially look the same with Omega Shinron being like slightly bigger and having all seven Dragon Balls on his uh, stomach. So yeah, other than that, not much of a difference. I believe it would make a lot of sense to have, to have Sin Shinron be the, you know, the permanently controlled character in that situation at least. And last but not least, Vegito. Um, obviously, Vegito is going to be in a Super Vegito, uh, Super Saiyan Vegito stage. And actually, we do have one more character I wanted to throw in there before we end this. But obviously, Vegito would be in a Super Saiyan stage. But as DLC, I see no reason why he can't be in a Super Saiyan Blue stage as well. Like, Vegito can be in that stage. And then obviously, they'll have another Vegito being the Super Saiyan Blue one. Or they could just go ahead and cut corners and just have regular Super Saiyan Vegito. I don't think it would be that much of a loss. And I do know fans will be a little bit disappointed though if they don't have Super Saiyan Blue Vegito. But we gotta remember this is Arc System and they're not just throwing characters in to just throw characters. They want to make sure each of these characters are as balanced as possible. That's why a lot of the characters on here that I had on the list, I essentially just changed them to, to costume changes to make things make a lot more sense. So the characters are still in the game, they're just not changing, they're not going to make an entire new stat total, stat palette, and an entire new model for a character that technically already exists just with different colors. So if Vegito's in here, I'm more than likely I believe his Super Saiyan stage is going to be there and not his Super Saiyan Blue stage. They could cop out and just have a Super Saiyan Blue stage since it was the most recent stage we saw. But the Super Saiyan stage is more iconic and it makes more sense with what's going on on screen. Oh, and last but not least, we actually do have another character, uh, Zamasu. So Zamasu, I believe that Zamasu has a place in this game and I, I can definitely see him utilizing a lot of mid-range techniques because he can turn his hand into like that saber, which gives him a lot of mid-game coverage. So I can definitely see that. Now, moving forward, but moving back, sorry, to when I said that Goku could have a costume change to make him look like Goku Black, I actually do see that there could be a costume change for Zamasu to make him look like Goku Black instead, considering that Goku Black and Zamasu are technically the exact same character. So, I feel a lot more confident about this choice, considering that it would make a lot more sense for Zamasu to have a costume change that makes him look like Goku Black and have the saber be purple instead of blue like uh, Zamasu uses. That way it makes a lot more sense for Zamasu and Goku Black to control the exact same because essentially they are the same character and even in Dragon Ball Super they were shown to have the exact same battle style. So it would be really cool to see that those two characters are basically the same character and it will give people a variety to mix it up if they want to use Zamasu or if they want to use uh, Goku Black. Now as for Merge Zamasu, don't believe that he should be in the game at all. Uh, his range would be, like range wise he would be very wonky to control. One of his arms is dangerously huger than the other. Even if we were to take Merge Zamasu and God form, I believe he has the ability to be in the game, but he'd control a lot like um, Mew 12 if you played Blaze Blue. She's like basically Noelle Vermillion, but souped up because she is, uh, she's been souped up. Just, you know, play the game and watch the plot and you'll pretty much see what Mew 12 is. But it's basically a character that already exists who was souped up to be a god tier level boss like character to fight. Many people don't use. Mew 12 a lot in tournament play or in arcade play unless A, they're the other characters that are playing are competent, they can beat Mew 12 or B, um, if you're using a god-like character like that, you, you're pretty much using it for, for the laws. And that's pretty much, I think, the same show will be with Vegito, is Vegito should crew control like that as well. So, with that said, Merge Zamasu I don't think should be in the game, and if he, sh if he is going to be in the game, if they absolutely have to put him in the game, 
then I say it may make him a god tier level like character like Mew 12 and that'll be pretty interesting to watch but other than that those are basically all the characters I had planned out I'm actually very surprised that a lot of these characters that I named actually do make it on the list overall I say that's about 20 to 30 that's about I want to say that's on average about 25 something 26 characters which makes the ultimate sense for an Arc System Dragon Ball Z game. They want to go for quality and not quantity, so I don't believe it's a smart move to just start jamming characters into games, especially since this is Arc System's very first professional, like, arcade-style Dragon Ball Z fighting game.